Hey, it's Matt, your Average Gamer, and I figured I'd do a revamped version of the Ultimate Night Mage. Now, this is going to be a lot of damage. You're going to be surprised at this. We're going to go through the majority of bosses in the game with this. We're going to do a ton of damage, buff it a whole bunch, and basically show off how powerful Night Comet is. Now, first up here is Melania. Now, this is New Game Plus 7. I believe we're on Journey 10 at this point. I'll show at some point in the video because we are going to start and do an entire New Game cycle and hit the majority of bosses in the game with this build. But for Melania, not difficult with Night Comet. She can't see it. It does a ton of damage to her, and you can buff it to do anywhere between four and 6,000 damage per Comet, which absolutely shreds her HP even on the highest difficulty settings of the game while also consistently hitting her because she can't sidestep or dodge it, which makes life a lot easier in terms of Melania. Now, this didn't take many tries on New Game Plus 7 for me. I think it was just between two and four tries for me to get the gist of how to do this. Best advice I can give when stepping in here, by the way, is to go to the back of the arena. The reason that you want to go to the back of the arena is, is because she may do waterfowl if you do enough damage from the front of the arena, trapping you. And if you're good at dodging it, great. But if you have a hard time dodging that move, going towards the back of the arena to cast Night Comet may be ultimately the safer bet and safer way of taking her on. That way you only have to deal with the last thing of waterfowl, which is very easy to dodge that last one. Now, we low health proc'd for this, as you can tell. This was actually a no-hit on Melania on New Game Plus 7, which I don't think was a first for me because I think I've done it with Burn Flame, but it was still pretty cool. I'm going to show the proccing order later, the build, everything that you need to know, stats, everything you need to know to make the ultimate Night Mage build. Now, where did I get the idea to do this? Well, I had done a build on this about two or three months ago. I wanted to add some buffs to it. In my most recent video, which I'll leave in the description below, I decided to add it to one of the best things that you could buff. This clip and another one that you're gonna see is from that video. And then we're gonna have a whole bunch of new clips as we go through the majority of the bosses in the game. But this was where I, I said to myself, hey, on these gargoyles, even on you know the max scaling of the game, they don't have a ton of HP, but look at the amount of damage they take. At this point, I was like, well, this can really be buffed up because with two staves of loss, you get a 60% boost for a Night Comet before any additional buffs. There's going to be some bosses, especially Morgoth, the Draconic Tree Set, and some on New Game Plus 7 here that you're going to have to see the amount of damage it does. It really is incredible. So if you're with me at this point, definitely hang and check those out. It, this, this build ended up being a lot more fun than I thought it was. I knew it was fun to begin with, but it became even more fun once I added some stuff to it, did more damage, and between the damage and the range, Night Comet is undoubtedly overpowered in PvE, super powerful, and it's very easy to use too because it has that extreme amount of range which is just awesome. It makes for a very, very, very solid mage build, doing a ton of damage from a distance, which is really just what we want to do. So where do you get the first Staff of Loss? Well, you can only get one per playthrough, but it's in Celia Town of Sorcery. You got to light these things at the top to eventually get Night Comet. You don't need to do that to get the Staff of Loss, but I'm going to show you where to get Night Comet as well. It's not too hard to find here. They're both in Celia Town of Sorcery. You can access them pretty much from the start of the game, but generally speaking, you're gonna to want to. If you don't have another one though, the Jellyfish Shield is an excellent substitute to put in the other hand. 10% less, you'll get 50% instead of 60, but it's still an awesome way to buff this. Now for Night Comet, it's a little bit more annoying because you gotta light the things or whatever, but yeah, just avoid the invisible guys, and here it is, I'll show that on the map too. They're both in Celia Town of Sorcery, not too bad to get. This is more of a late game build given the stat requirements on Night Comet and to get the maximum amount of damage out of it, but it's always good to grab that first Staff of Loss. Grab that, grab Night Comet. If you're, gonna, if you're a mage, you're gonna wanna have this as part of your arsenal. And now that Melania is done, we're going to jump into what I believe is Journey 10 here because we're going to go through a lot of the difficult bosses, at least main ones in the game and such. We're going to skip some of the early ones here, start at the Magma Worm, work our way up, and show how powerful Night Comet can be. So there was a lot of testing for me to come up with a build that I like. I actually died a couple times early just testing out different builds, and then if it wasn't high enough damage or something that I would like, I would kind of let the enemy kill me. In this case, the Magma Worm, I think, was twice, until I buffed it to the point where I did a ton of damage. And he was actually one of the first ones where I kind of got down a buffing system to use that did a lot of damage. And then here you're going to see with Radon. If I had paid attention to my flask here upcoming, he wouldn't have had a phase two, 
but even so, the amount of damage we're able to do with Night Comet is phenomenal. And I know Radon's not the most tricky once you've gone through multiple new game cycles to solo because he's really slow. He's very easy to dodge his attacks. He's very kind of forgive. He's kind of forgiving with the attack patterns that he has. Easy to dodge. Easy to roll through a lot of them. Standing under him in a lot of cases can get you not hit. And then of course. He doesn't have a ridiculous amount of HP either. Even on the max scaling of the game, I believe it's close to 20,000 HP with it, which isn't really anything that's insane, and it's completely doable. Even with all that said, though, Night Comet still absolutely shredded him, and he's got fairly decent, probably at least some magic resistance as well, and it still did a lot of damage. Now, here's one where I first said, wow, this is like an insane amount of damage was on the Draconic Tree Sentinel. I was really surprised here. You're going to see this in a second. But with just one, two, and three Night Comets, there we go. Boom. Goodbye, Draconic Tree Sentinel. Never even got to a second phase or to really do anything at all. He went down almost instantly. Upcoming with Morgoth here, well, guess what? A little bit of deja vu here, as you can tell. Fairly certain. It's also three comments. The last one goes through, but I'm pretty sure he's dead by then. And yeah, three comments. Doesn't even get a chance to phase at all. And goodbye, Morgoth. Completely toast. By the way, he's a lot easier to kill after the scene. If you die once from him, you have a lot more range to use it. Um, after the scene, he will appear on top of you, which makes it a little bit more difficult to buff. Now, for the Fire Giant, I wasn't overly worried. Why? Because he has zero magic resistance. I decided after a second try, I believe this was on the second try, to go with the Moon to get the debuff on him first, and then attack him with Night Comet after some buffs and whatnot. And again, we're going to show the buffing system later, so that we can do a lot of damage to the Fire Giant, who has 63,000 HP on New Game Plus 7. So, I mean, at 63,000 HP, he has a lot of health. He's very, very, very tanky at this point, and we're gonna wanna do a lot of damage. So we started with the Moon on the big guy to see how much that would do, and then to be able to hit him with Night Comet. The Moon has good tracking on him. It's gonna hit him most of the times, and then you can kinda bait him into his jump attack, and then use Terra Magica so that you're already set up, and then able to do a lot of damage with Night Comet at that point, absolutely shredding him once his ankle breaks there, and then boom, tons of damage. Second phase can be a little trickier because his weak points aren't as viable in most senses, but as a mage, it's a little bit easier. Don't forget, though, we did lose some of the buffs by the second phase. Even so, though, I think it's, what, four or five night comets. Might have been four if they were all charged. And there goes the fire giant on new game plus seven. That wasn't even sort of difficult. He takes the full complement of magic damage, making him a very, very good boss for this build. Next up is the Godskin Duo. Now, the Godskin Duo can take a ton of damage from Night Comets. They're like any other boss in the game, and you don't even need Sleeping Pots because we're going to do so much damage from the get-go that we're going to be able to get one out of the way, and then once it's 1v1, and since we're playing as a mage, it's going to be much more reasonable, and the fight is going to be relatively fair. So first up is we target the Noble because he's closer to us, and I think after just one... I believe two and three comets should get rid of him, and then it's going to be a much more fair fight because then it's going to be a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, which is much better. We won't need sleeping pots, and we can absolutely obliterate their health pars with Night Comet because Night Comet is very powerful against them, as it is with most bosses in the entire game. It really is a fantastic build that does tons of damage and is incredibly buffable for very, very, very good power throughout all game cycles. Truly does do a lot of damage, and it's one of my favorite builds now to use. Night Comet is really fantastic, and then we have the bosses that can't see it and such too, so it's got benefits there as well. Even here with the Godskin, I believe it's the Apostle. I don't think he sidesteps Night Comet. I believe Melania, Radagon, all the bosses that would normally sidestep in general are just going to get hit by it. I'm not sure he might sidestep it. I really don't know for sure. I didn't see him do it a lot. I guess it's possible, but I know it goes right through and hits Melania. It hits Radagon without him even attempting to block it from what I can see. It's very powerful against the majority of bosses in Elden Ring, and good my godskin duo. That wasn't even sort of difficult. Just on the first try, they went down. 
Now, I know this guy's not mandatory, but some of you guys I know have difficulty with him. He can be very tricky, but yeah, just four night comets, I think it is here. Is it four or five? It's barely five. And yeah, he goes down pretty instantly. And then you don't have to worry about getting hit in the back at the door, which is a big bonus. And it's a very quick way of completely getting rid of the tougher Draconic Tree Sentinel. Now, Malachith was actually the first, and Beast Clergyman was the first boss that took a couple of tries. It was about three or four, and mainly because of the second phase. I was trying to get used to how much time I had to cast it, because he's very quick. He's going to go all about the arena as fast as he can, and I kind of got some unlucky RNG, even though I was close to him the first two tries. He kept doing his ranged attacks, which made it very difficult. Generally speaking with Malachith, you want to be as close as possible to him, as you can see there. Just getting behind him, you can even dodge that attack. Stay close to him, stay near him, and in a lot of cases, you're not even going to get hit. And anything he does do is going to be very dodgeable because it's within reason. And as far as Gideon goes, I don't think I need to explain Gideon much, um, but yeah, I think he's like two Night Comets. You can probably one-shot him on New Game or New Game Plus with Night Comet. It's probably very, very possible to do that. Gideon is incredibly easy for almost all builds. And then Horolu specifically, a little bit of Godfrey gave me a bit of a hard time. They were actually the first ones. Melania only took like three tries. So and I think Malakath was two or three. The most goes to Godfrey, which was four or five between his stomp, which I think hit me the first time and then getting grappled like two times in a row the second time because I did what I did there, except I didn't dodge it. And that happened to me two times in a row. You think I would have dodged it because I was getting greedy. After not getting greedy, I took a step back, went for the hits on him, and then ended up taking him down. Not too much of an issue there, but compared to some of the other bosses, a little bit surprising there. Godfrey and Horolu actually gave me more of a harder time than any of the other bosses in the game that were in this video. Now, Radagon is actually not too difficult at all. The main thing that you're going to want to do with Radagon is hit, his, hit him as many times as possible once you get into the room. I say that with all builds. As far as Radagon goes, he has a very forgiving window at the beginning that you want to utilize to get as much damage, stack as much damage as possible, because he's a glass cannon ultimately, and take him out fairly quickly. And good old Elden Beast, well, it only took one try once I got to him, but I did use the full health version for pretty much this entire fight, mainly because of Elden Beast, Elden Stars, and all that stuff, dealing with chip damage and whatnot. I didn't want to go in with the low HP version, and it doesn't matter because Elden Beast has good magic or decent magic resistance, so he doesn't even take that much from Night Comet. It's one of the few bosses where it's just not that fantastic on him. It works well, it's very doable, but as far as Elden Beast goes, as you're going to see here, and I kind of cut the clip to make it shorter a little bit, this fight went on for a while, because in a lot of cases, for a lot of builds, it does. Elden Beast is the ultimate stamina check after all. I mean, really, he is a boss, but he is really just a stamina check to see how much you can run around, how much you can dodge, and how much you can deal with ridiculous amounts of spammy holy damage throughout an entire fight. I'm not a huge fan of the final boss in Elden Ring. I've said that before on my channel. It's not like the worst or anything like that, but I feel like they could have... They could have done a little more with it, and the fact that it's a back-to-back -back always felt like it was a little bit, I don't want to say cheap, but it was kind of an odd choice to go that route, and then have two different boss setups where a lot of builds will work on one and then not work on the other. Again, I'm at the point now where I don't have difficulty with either, but I hear a lot of feedback from people with Radagon and Elden Beast having a lot of difficulty, and to be honest, it doesn't surprise me. When I first got the game, they were a tough fight for me too, because they're a very odd combination, two entirely different boss types, even though they have the same damage type, their move sets and what you use against them, it's just crazy. And moving forward here, you're going to see me take down Elden Beast, but as you can tell, it was definitely a good amount of time it took for this. Elden Beast isn't the perfect example of Night Comet. Does it work well on him? Sure, but things like Lightning, Comet Azure, obviously strength builds as well. There's a lot of other builds that you could use that are better for Elden Beast. Posture breaking him is great. That's a really convenient way of taking him down. Overall, though, he's absolutely going to be tough with a lot of different builds, and Night Comet falls somewhere in between, where it's just an average fight. It's not tough, but it's not exactly very, very easy either, because it doesn't damage him as much as it damages some of the other bosses, even though it does have good range, which helps in this fight, and charging it does decent damage. 
It's not as extreme as it is with the other bosses where you saw and I absolutely shredded them for a lot of damage. He just has a lot of HP, fairly good resistances, and as you're going to see here what journey we're on ending here, because a lot of people ask me this, that was a complete run through, and now we're going to go over stats and equipment. So we have two stabs of Lost, any seal will do. Seppuku or Bloody Slash to bring your health down. I never grab Seppuku for some reason. And then we have the Mushroom Crown and the Black Dumpling. Graven Mass Talisman or Kinjin Rot's Exaltation. Godfrey Icon, Ritual Swords or rather Red Feathered Branch Sword. And then we have the Magic Scorpion Charm. And then we have the Magic Tear as well. Fetid Pots and Boluses. And as far as stats here, we're gonna look at stats here, but the main thing is, and this can be done at level 150, you're generally gonna want at least 60 intelligence. You could drop mine down to 30, so that's gonna get a lot of levels off there, five off endurance. You don't need any strength if you're not running the jellyfish shield. Around 150, 160, this is absolutely doable. My mage is level 200, I stopped leveling at 200, but we're on journey 10, so 200 is reasonable. I wanna have a fair amount of power to go throughout the later journeys. So for the buffing, you can tell we're going to bring our HP down. And while we're doing that, if you're not sub, definitely sub to this channel if you love overpowered PvE builds. There's a ton of awesome builds on my channel, so definitely be sure to check those out. Then we're going to proc the Black Dumpling here. Then you always go with the longer duration buffs first, and then use the Black Dumpling last to proc that last one and bring you down to virtually no HP. And then we're going to immediately from that point use the longer buffs, which are Golden Val, you're going to drink your flask of tears and all that. I keep saying tear, but I know it's tears. It just I said it wrong once and I still say it wrong. But uh, anyway, you're drinking your flask of wondrous physics for the magic tear. You're using golden vow. Again, longer duration buffs first. And then we're going to use Howlisher Brewery. And then we're going to drink some FP up. And then we're going to poison proc and put down Terra Magica. You can see the entire order down here. Not too difficult, takes a little bit to get used to, but that's gonna maximize your damage. And be sure to hit that subscribe button if you love overpowered PVE builds. As I mentioned, I'm trying to build an awesome Elden Ring community. We have a Discord and whatnot too. I think I attached that to most videos or in the comment section below. And it's been fantastic so far. It's been growing, been able to help a lot of people out, get some ideas and kind of have like a group where we're talking about Elden Ring and stuff all the time, which is pretty cool. And overall, the builds we've been able to make is awesome, fantastic. So for Night Comet, obviously, this is an S-tier build. This is fantastic. Be sure to sub. Thanks for watching, everybody.